Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in San Francisco, California. I'm John Furrier, here with Dustin Kirkland, contributing analyst for theCUBE, and also we've got our full team coverage. Rob Streche, Lisa Martin, Rob Hove, Mark Havlis, and the whole team. Getting the stories, writing them up, pumping out the videos, getting all the data from the experts, from the senior executives at Google, to the startup founders and ecosystem players that are growing and large integrators, all here on theCUBE for three days. Our next guest, John Rosu, CTO of Aptium Technologies, flight all the way in from Romania to be with this CUBE interview. Okay. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, John. Thanks for having me. Um, so, love that what you guys do. Take a minute to explain what the company does and your role as CTO. Okay, so my role as CTO basically revolves around uh, shaping the technological vision, guiding innovation, and making sure that all of that uh, aligns with the business needs and goals. Uh, I'm in deeply involved in everything related to strategy, security, architecture, and uh, customer uh, experience. I come for a, from a background of uh, startups and uh, startup incubation, so that's my primary love and that's uh, my primary drive. With that said, I'm deeply involved into any, everything that's related to product vision and product management. And how far along is the company um, in terms of size, age? In, in terms of size, uh, we are in the hundreds right now. So uh, in terms of uh, age, we have uh, more than 10 years. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about Aptium's core business, what you guys do, who you serve, who your customers are? Yeah, so uh, our main mission is to seamlessly blend uh, the digital transformation expertise with the cloud uh, commerce solution. So we strive to empower businesses uh, by using integrated uh, and automated solutions to foster growth, efficiency, and uh, innovation. Uh, our uh, ecosystem orchestration platform uh, basically does just that. It provides a central hub for our customers to be able to do everything related to cloud transaction and cloud commerce. How did the platform get started? What were well, the so, challenges? What yeah. was the problem you were solving? Yeah, so the history of the platform is actually very long and uh, has a lot of uh, twists and turns. So it originally started with a problem, and that problem was, can we reverse uh, engineer the cloud metering and the cloud billing solutions that the cloud providers had at that time, okay? And once we had that solved, we were able to take the same mechanism and replicate it in a end-tier uh, model. That basically uh, allowed us to, to solve for everything related to uh, cloud selling and cloud reselling, so basically reselling of uh, cloud services. Once we did that, we basically had uh, started to tackle all the rest of the problems related to cloud commerce, uh, which were uh, providing a marketplace, a catalog for all the customers to actually uh, be able to publish on their own be able to surface that on a, a very customizable, uh, tailored uh, solution marketplace that they can share further downstream. Uh, so yeah, that basically became what we know today, today as a cloud commerce platform, which is CCP, Optimum CCP platform. Yeah, and you're here at the Google Cloud yeah. conference. Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit about you know, how Google Cloud fits into your solution? Uh, so, Google Cloud is one of our main uh, vendors within the platform, and it's been evolving a lot, uh, and we're benefiting and also providing a lot of benefits to Google Cloud by integrating or uh, solutions that uh, Google Cloud provides uh, doing provisioning on behalf of our customers or on behalf of the resellers. We're also doing consolidated billing with Google Cloud and we have the full circle of uh, doing the cloud commerce for GCP uh, to the end uh, consumer. What's the role of AI, if any, that you see coming into play? Because the Duet AI demo was impressive. And yeah, you see no, Google positioned very well for this. That was impressive, and uh, AI is really the future. I think uh, by that, uh, by this time, everybody can recognize that. Okay, for me, it's a little bit uh, scary because I know it's just the tip of the iceberg. But uh, with that said, at Aptum, we're deeply involved into uh, 
uh, AI uh, technologies. One of the original uh, solutions that we uh, benefited with AI from was basically providing a cost optimization engine. We consume a lot of data uh, on behalf of our customers. We consume a lot of data, billing data and usage data and all of that stuff. So uh, we've created a cost optimization engine which basically analyzes all uh, those data points and since we have the exact workloads that our customers use, we can provide a very, very exact forecast on how the future is going to look like uh, financially. So that was like the main uh, thing that we experimented for. Uh, for. Nowadays, since uh, everybody's talking about generative AI and all of that stuff, uh, that stuff we've started uh, also experimenting with various solutions like uh, uh, providing automatic uh, marketing content generation for our customers uh, to be able to easily publish into a catalog. So they're seeing the benefits of that. The extreme yeah. benefits. So there's a this is a new term for me, just but in the, the prep for this conversation, um, ecosystem orchestration. I'm not sure I know what that it is. Yeah, so uh, is. can you explain it and what that means? For us, ecosystem orchestration is basically the process of managing and coordinating multiple uh, parts of uh, an ecosystem. So basically, uh, by doing that, multiple actors and multiple players can create consolidated value and share that value across a common set of uh, customers. So for example, our ecosystem orchestration platform basically handles the full circle of uh, cloud commerce. So it's dealing with the root of the problem, which is uh, where you buy from, so vendors, uh, cloud providers, service vendors, and all of that, handling the financial aspect of things, like doing uh, the actual billing on your behalf, doing the uh, generating invoices for your resellers, for your customers, using that uh, output data uh, to submit to, I don't know, other invoice systems or PSA systems and all of that. That data is also, uh, can be retrieved via API so that they can, whoever wants to augment it further or could customize it further, they're able to do that. And uh, if you move like further down, you have like a fully fledged uh, catalog that you can uh, benefit uh, from either uh, on uh, direct selling or indirect selling if you're reselling like cloud uh, solutions or other vendor solutions you are able to basically distribute those augment the pricing and augment things and publish those in your own uh, catalog and distribute those in uh, using the marketplace to your end customers and uh, Another thing that we handle on the end consumer on the marketplace, okay, we're, uh, we also have built a subscription engine and a metering en uh, engine, which basically can detach everything that's uh, between uh, reseller and end customers to whatever consolidated billing is done uh, uh, upstream. So basically at the end of the day, we can consolidate all of that so that we provide a full uh, central hub in which any seller okay, can see exactly what's going on uh, on all aspects, financial and uh, all of that related to uh, what their uh, base cost is, what their price and how their business is doing at any time of the day. It sounds like a complex space, so you've, yeah, it's a it's, lot of work for you to do to help customers simplify all of that, right? Yeah, it's like a super app to say it like that. Super it has app. a lot of co uh, components. Super apps. Uh, uh, yeah, it has like a lot of components and basically the, the term that uh, you're mentioning, ecosystem orchestration, yep. is basically the central hub that coordinates all the parties or the art actors and all the relationships in between. Yeah. I love that super app because we like to call multiple clouds super cloud as that layer yeah. um, creates these new capabilities. I can see in my mind's eye how AI might work by bringing all these pieces together at runtime or assemble services or create shortcuts and reduce the steps it takes to service the customer or get more insights or signals. I mean, I can just imagine that. What is a what is your service model look like without AI and with AI? I don't think that in today's world we can say without AI because we, <laughs> <It's> already, <yeah. laughs> we already took that direction, okay? And uh, for us it's central because we invest a lot into 
have a lot of data. We have a lot of data and uh, we already provide uh, deep insights and reporting and analytics and providing that uh, consolidated view or of what the state of your business is. But we're going to do so much more with the AI. So for us, it's not a question yeah. whether we're going to take the non-AI route. <laughs> I want to ask you a question, if you don't mind. Um, you know, in AI, one of the things we like about it is the benefits it brings, obviously, we see that. The interface, as consumers and um, users of AI, even in the cloud, whether you're a developer or putting a solution together or serving customers, the user interfaces are changing. Yeah. And they need to get simpler and cleaner. So you can abstract away complexity, mm -hmm. but I know that you, know, you like you know, incubating technology, bringing products to market. You know, ease of use is a big part of the product, the making it feel like a good, clean product. What's your vision on how to make AI simpler uh, for folks watching and, and using your product? What's your strategies? How do you think about making the product a beautiful or more elegant or easier to use, simpler, reducing the steps? We're at a time where we don't want more complexity, we want faster. Exactly. So yeah, one of the, since I'm coming from this startup space, uh, one of the main, the main uh, core values that uh, we bring to the table is basically making sure that whatever complexity there is in the best, in the back, the focus is always on simplicity, on user experience to make sure that whatever complexity happens in the back, we keep things very simple. And we abstract the complexity away from the customer's experience. That's extremely, extremely important for us. Uh, with that said, since you asked about how that can be done uh, with AI or for AI, uh, for us, the, uh, all the AI technology that, are, that we use is, are basically technology that we use in the back. The customers cannot see those. So, for example, uh, one of the things that uh, we are working on right now is basically a recommendation engine uh, using AI to, that's 100% uh, tailored for uh, cloud commerce, because there's a lot of solutions out there uh, uh, for recommendation engines. So the, you're saying you're, the, the end customer doesn't directly interface with the AI, exactly. but they're, they're clearly seeing the benefits of what you're doing in, in the exactly. background, right? So it's just transparent and that's part of the value that you add is you know, hiding the complexity. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, so I was saying about that recommendation engine, since we consume a lot of cloud data and we have deep insights into how people transact on uh, everything related to cloud and uh, uh, our vendors, we can basically tailor a recommendation solution uh, specifically for cloud solutions, which in our experiments, it's super exciting, it's super neat. Yeah. John, I really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. As we conclude this interview, what gets you most excited about AppDM's business prospects, and what message would you want to share to the audience watching about the, about the company and the, your role and the future of the company? So there's a lot of things that excites me, excite me about uh, AppDM, but what excites me the most is the limitless uh, technological uh, innovation uh, and uh, uh, true impact that uh, we can do. Uh, with that said, we are on the verge of uh, deploying uh, a lot of solutions that we believe that are going to change the whole cloud commerce scene. Okay, so for the people that are uh, thinking of uh, joining uh, Optum's uh, family as a partner, okay, we are saying that you are not investing in a company. You are investing in a community that's fully dedicated in making solutions for real world problems today, okay? We are not following trends in this space. We are committed to setting the trend. So I thank you very much for this opportunity. Great, congratulations on your success. Thank you for spending time with us here at Google Cloud Next in Thanks. San Francisco. Thanks so much. Okay, John Grosso, CTO of Aptium Technologies here in theCUBE, live coverage. I'm bringing you all the action from theCUBE's team coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host with Dustin Kirkland, CUBE analyst, contributing analyst. Rob Stretch is here, Lisa Martin, SiliconANGLE staff, so you're getting all the stories. Share in real time, go to the youtube.com slash siliconangle for the videos, thecube.net. Of course, siliconangle.com is where all the content is. Uh, tons of stories flowing, tons of videos. We got our AI working. <laughs> Enjoy the content. We'll be right back with more live coverage after this short break.